All right, so open up your Niagara system ring. And as always, I'll leave a link to the previous video in the description below so you can get to this point. So the very first thing we are going to add on is collision. This does get pretty costy, especially if you have a lot of rain, but most modern computers can handle this. So it's not too big of a deal. It just has a pretty big CPU impact. So under the particle update, click the little plus right here and search for collision right here. Then you want to click the plus again. You want to generate collision event to actually generate the event. Now this will give you two errors. And to fix these two errors, they're the same thing. You just have to go up here to the emitter properties and click requires persistent ID right here. And then that should completely fix both the errors. And this right here is also where the uh, CPU cost I was talking about comes into play. All right, so now if you leave it, how it is right now these particles will actually bounce whenever they hit something or whenever they hit something they can collide with so to fix this we want to simply just click in the particle update the little plus again and search for kill particles right there and then we want to do a little binding on this because if we just tick this then it will just kill them as soon as they spawn so what you want to do is click this little arrow to do a binding and then search for has collided right here. And so now whenever these particles hit something, they will get destroyed. All right. So now that we have the collision all set up, we can actually add the splash effect particles. So right click, add emitter and search for hanging particles. These just have a nice stylized effect to them. And also, it's a simple foundation for what we are going to be doing. And you can, if you don't like the stylized effect, you can go down here to the sprite render. And you can create your own material and you can control how the sprite actually looks. So you can create your own splash effects and whatnot. Alright, and once you have it added, as you can see, the particles are kind of just hanging in the air right here. And they're just not disappearing or anything. So we need to change this to where these spawn where the rain actually hits. So this is where our collision we just created comes in. Alright, so up here, first things first, on the stage right here, we need to add a new stage. Event Handler. You may already have this. If not, just add it right there. No big deal. Alright, and over here on the source, change this to Collision Event. Because that's whenever we want the... Because like I said, you want the particles to spawn whenever the rain hits the floor or the ground or ceiling or whatever it may be hitting. And over here on the execution mode, you want to do spawn particles. And the spawn number, you simply just want to do one because we only want one splash effect. And the, the, max, the max events per frame right here, this essentially just lets you limit like how many of these particles they'll actually be so there are some resources to make this a little less expensive but i'm just going to keep mine zero just for like every particle that hits it'll have a splash effect but you could set this to something like maybe 20 or something if you really want to and then some of the particles will have splash effects some of them won't All right, and so now we need to actually receive the collision so for this you want to add another event handler and there's a special one for this, literally called Receive Collision Event, right here. Alright, so next we want to get rid of these particles right here that are just chilling. So to do that, you just simply disable the spawn rate right here. Super easy. And so now whenever the raindrops hit the ground, right now these hanging particles last forever. Or, well not forever, but they last for a long time. So on the initialized particles... You want to set this these random values to something like 0.01 and 0.02. And so now we want to adjust the size of them. So again, on the initialized particle right here, sprite attributes, the sprite size mode. Instead of random uniform, just do non-uniform and set it to like 4 and 4. Just to make them a little bit bigger so that you can see them. And again, these... These settings are customizable, so you could make yours last a little bit longer when they hit the ground, 
or you can make them a little bit smaller. I just really want to embrace the stylized effect, so that's why I'm making them fairly large. I may even up it to five. And so now there's one last thing we got to do is over here on the collision on the fountain for the actual rain that's falling on the collision right here is the particle radius scale right here. So I'm going to set mine to probably like 0.3. And keep in mind, if you set this too small, then the raindrops will start to fall through the roof. They won't collide through roofs. And so you'll have a few raindrops that fall through the roof. But if you set this number too high, then the hanging particles, the splash effect, will spawn really far off the ground. So if there's like a ledge or something that the player sees eye to eye with, it will be obvious that the rain particles aren't spawning on the ground. So you may just have to play around with this value and find the perfect number for you. But yeah, with all that out of the way, if we save, I believe we can just go ahead and test this out. Oh, and real quick, I have the, the third-person character open. Because with this, you want to obviously spawn it on your character like this. And I have this searched over here. Because if you want to not have the rain rotate when the character rotates, just select your Niagara system. And for the attachment, select auto manage attachment. And for the rotation, do keep world. And then whenever the player rotates around, the rain won't rotate. So now you can compile and save everything. And we can test this out. Alright, so the rain is spawning. And I messed with some of those values. That I said were customizable. That's all I did. Because I wanted it to. It didn't really look right to me. And I wanted to change a few of the values. But yeah as you can see. Whenever the rain hits the ground. There's a little splash effect. And it's sort of like a stylized look. And again you could make a custom material for this. And make it really fancy. But I just like the little stylized little dot splash whenever it hits the ground but yeah again just play with the settings make it how make it customizable how you'd like it and you could even experiment do your own thing but yeah that's how you can make a little splash effect for rain if you enjoyed leave a like subscribe for more and i will see you in the next one Bye bye